Oh no! Oh no! Here we go again! It looks like one tarantula escaped, but this time it is completely my fault. And I need to turn off this waterfall because there is just too much noise coming from him. So yeah, I'll just simply unplug it. And there we go, the water is returning. So in a moment now, yeah, silence. And I can even close it off if I really want to. But okay, there's no need for that, let me open it. Even though when I finish the waterfall, I am pretty sure that it will produce less noise, but still I think that this will be new reality, that uh, every time I'm recording a video, I will need to unplug the, the pump so it doesn't produce any noise here. So, the tarantula escaped. Yeah, that's the case. And it is sweet Brahipelma Behme female. I actually showed her recently in a video where I measured some of my tarantulas, I measured their weight, and in that video, if you remember, I noticed that the, the magnet actually broke off. You see, I have a magnet that holds a front lid like that. And I noticed that it was broken. So I said that I need to fix it, but I completely forgot to do that. Uh, as I'm recording the video, I'm just moving the enclosures from the table and putting them back to their spot. So therefore I completely forgot that her enclosure is broken. And this is what I found out today when I entered the dark den the the front lid was on the floor and you see the the magnet has fallen off so i assume that she just gently pushed the door and the door just went like boom and therefore they broke off the hinges but i really hope that when she did that she wasn't actually on the door because that means that she actually fell on the floor together with the door and that would potentially be bad because that is the way but uh, tarantula can easily rapture her abdomen. Thankfully, around the area I don't see any fluids, so it means, it probably means that she didn't do that. She didn't fell like that, but she actually just moved out of the enclosure because they can actually climb on the glass and stuff. So she probably went down somewhere. So we will need to look around the uh, around the dark den and try to find her. If you remember, like half a year ago, my Pizzoteria Ornata also escaped. Uh, she also managed to open her door. That's why, you see, I have it additionally secured with this tape, but that escape was by far trickier because Poke is their old world and they have stronger venom, they are much faster and also she's arboreal so she could actually climb up and hide something somewhere on the top while this one is terrestrial and I'm pretty sure that she will be somewhere on the ground level, like I'm certain to that, even though I found Pokey also on the ground level, thankfully. So we will need to remove all of those boxes also, I will need to check under these wood pieces and also over there. But first I need to thank to the sponsor of this video, yeah I actually have a sponsor, crazy! And it is the one that actually sent me this skull, crazy skull, you see I finally managed to mount it. And it is actually too wide for this spot, you see, it is actually behind the, behind the shelf. And even though I have a mounting plate on which you mount the skull and then mount that on the, on the wall, unfortunately if I put that behind the skull, then the skull is protruding from the wall too much and it just doesn't fit here. So therefore this screw is unfortunately visible. But what do you say? It looks so, so sweet. It actually fits the environment perfectly. If only this, this was a bit wider area. So uh, it was sent to me by a company named Skabliss and they produce these awesome skulls. This is a real skull that is hand carved. And also you see the horns are also hand carved and this is hand carved and painted black. There are different kind of options, ton of options when it comes to the style of the skull. But I prefer this completely black style, kind of the best, yeah, the prettiest. So if a skull like that is something that interests you, you will find a link in the description together with a discount code. Now let's go and try to find the freaking tarantula. Firstly, I will move these boxes and check out if she is somewhere in between those boxes, because that is where last time I found the Pezzoteria Ornata. Let's check it out. Nothing. Although she's maybe too fat to squeeze in between. You know that her abdomen was pretty big, while Pezzoteria Ornata is kinda slimmer. 
maybe here behind all of that stuff nope not here i can now continue this way actually but i doubt that you can squeeze in between here nothing maybe behind this plastic nope but you see a lot of dead isopods those are the ones that escaped uh, from the from this enclosure because sometimes i don't close fully the you see like i oh know it's closed sometimes i accidentally don't fully close it and then they squeeze out but then unfortunately they become a spider food as you can see i doubt that she crawled inside of this yeah oh and this is actually the stand for the skull you see you hang the skull on this thing and then you hang this edge on the wall and then you cannot see the screw but unfortunately yeah, i can't really use it but this is not important now um i really don't think that she's somewhere you know somewhere here uh, this wall can be a bit colder so i highly doubt that she's somewhere here but need to check it regardless by the way you see the glass for the enclosures. I will be selling my enclosures on this month's Terra Plaza in Hungary, in Budapest. So if you want to get them and you are close to Hungary, make sure to come and get them here. Give me just a moment to kinda check this out a bit better because I don't want to go into that room before I'm completely sure that she's not in the, in the terrestrial area of this room. Nah, she's definitely not here. Okay, we can actually just this quickly. Nope. <laughs> also, I must not forget to look behind the behind the shells because you know she could like crawl like this and then go behind. That is also a real possibility. So if I <laughs> what? That was too easy. And I almost forgot to check here. So. Thankful I remembered and yeah, I saved myself a bit of time, a bit of wasted time. It looks like she's behind these enclosures. So this also in the same time means that she didn't fall down together with the door, which is great. I was really afraid of that. Look at her. <laughs> you figured out that you can escape, huh? Cheeky cheeky tarantula. But great, great, great. I would just try to get her on my hand, but she is a notorious hair kicker. So therefore I will just use a catch cup, yeah, to be extra safe. Because I don't want to deal with hairs. This should be an easy operation. Yeah, you see, she was kicking hairs immediately. And she continues to do it. Hair kicking is her specialty. There we go. But we can easily deal with that. Let me just close it off. Because we need to fix her enclosure now and I actually have a plan mm, before I explain give me a second to clean this I mean to put back the enclosures and to bring her enclosure there now I actually had a plan to fix her and all of these enclosures because slowly but surely all of these enclosures are starting to fail because the glue I use for securing the magnet obviously doesn't last forever so therefore I need to fix them and the way I thought to fix them is to convert them to this design you see this is you know my trusty old design and I actually have two enclosures that I previously made with 3d printed parts and you see it is a functional kind of it is functioning but it is not great mainly because they are not printed well but now you know i have a parts that are plastic injected like these and they are far more sturdy and, and super practical but the problem is they are 20 centimeters wide made for these enclosures and to make wider parts i will need to order a mold for wider parts but there is a problem a huge problem because those molds are custom made and they are extremely extremely expensive they are made uh, each mold is made out of basically a solid block of iron of this size and for longer parts it will require a longer iron uh, mold and that is extremely expensive but as you can see over there i have a kind of solution for that problem because i was like wait a minute i can just take two of these and cut them to a certain specific length and then just connect them to whatever width i need and you see it looks amazing and this is actually the enclosure that i first wanted to test this but now since this one is already broken 
I will actually be testing it on this, uh, this enclosure. I already got the glass that I need right here because I ordered it to test it out on that enclosure and also maybe you already spotted but I have these arboreal ones that are they're already parts that I'm testing here you see and all the parts for this one. So I actually wanted to test it out without recording a video about it on that enclosure and then if everything is all right then make a proper video showing you the technique of doing that but now it looks like I will just need to to see if everything works with this enclosure on the video. But if my calculations are correct this should fit like a glove. First we need to strip down everything from the enclosure. Ugh. It actually broke down unfortunately, but I have a solution for that. There we go, easy peasy. This is where the magnet was glued and the glue is still on the glass. So we need to remove that. I actually don't need to remove it, but if I want a prettier enclosure, then it is a no brainer, you see, there we go. Now these plastic parts should go like, yeah, just like that. Once again we have a leftover glue that thankfully it is pretty simple to remove. Thankfully it is not a super sticky glue. <laughs> There we go, everything is removed. Now let me just get um, a piece of paper to clean the edges a bit and we can proceed with gluing the parts. First I need to see if this front ventilation actually fits. Yeah, it fits perfectly, you see? So we can glue it. For that I use a Loctite super glue, uh, but I think that you can use any super glue to connect this. And this is the one that is water resistant, so that is a good thing. You can also use a uh, silicone, but from my experience the super glue holds better. This will now be an unofficial guide on how to assemble a dark den enclosure, because you know these plastic parts will be available on the web shop. But I still need to, to figure out the packaging. And voila! Gentle tap with a hammer and we should be down to business. These, no, not that one. These are top panels, these are the doors. The smaller ones are the, the terrestrial and higher are for arboreal, of course. The funniest thing is I ordered them a week and a half ago and today is when they were finished, just in time for this. So it is like it was a destiny to do this. Now before I glue the door I want to test them out and that is the beauty of these parts because you can test them out like that. They aren't like holding super strong when they are not glued, but they hold well enough to test the stuff out. So that goes here, okay. And the top part, okay, let's see. Uh, it seems, it seems all right. That means that we can glue it down. These top elements serves a double purpose. First one is of course you see this where it holds the door in place acts as a hinge while the other one I mean the other purpose is you see there is a groove here here and on the other side that is where this come in play. This is where you slide the glass for the top side just like the oh I forgot to put this one I don't want to glue it now because I actually cut it accidentally on the wrong side and I will cut a new one without this but that's why I don't want to glue it with this done all we need to do is cover this and for that it is a combination of glass and plastic the glass goes here I secure that with silicone while the plastic part one goes here and the other one goes here just like that silicone uh, super glue so let me do that and voila that is it let me just clean everything up but that is boring so one time jump and everything is clean including the enclosure I didn't clean it like perfectly but it is kind of shiny you see. You my girl can go inside even though I don't think that she will appreciate the change that we made because while these enclosures are prettier than these ones 
and not to mention more practical, the tarantula doesn't really care about it. <laughs> I often say like, as roaches keep coming and there is enough humidity, the tarantula will, <laughs> will be satisfied with any enclosure you put it in. Oh, and not to mention a bit of substrate and the hide so they can actually hide inside. There we go. Of course, we can end this video with a feeding because today it is Monday, the time when I'm feeding my tarantulas and this Monday I feed, I need to feed all, so I also need to feed her. Let me try to make it a bit attractive. Although because we messed with her, uh, maybe she won't be yeah exactly what i what i was afraid of because we were messing with her she is not really down for for a takedown so we will need to do one quick time jump and now i think she will be down for action so let's find out uh -huh. yeah there we go it wasn't an impressive takedown but it was a takedown for sure so yeah with that being done with everything complete i think that we can finish this video so i hope that you enjoyed it if you did thumbs it up and comment something if you want to support this channel even more there's a patreon page if you're new to this channel make sure to subscribe I upload every monday sometimes on friday so see you again soon bye <laughs>